Eccles is here on the Jewish calendar. It is October 17th to 23rd, so we are right now in the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Old Testament instructs the people of God to make tents for seven days to remember their temporary journey and God's provision in the wilderness. And that represents rejoicing to be the people of God, remembering his provision, rejoicing that God has provided. And the, within the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, there is an emphasis in the Bible on palm branches. In Leviticus 23, 40, you shall take of the first day uh, the fruit of splendid trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. So the seven days of rejoicing. And when the rapture comes, we're going to glory. And we're going to rejoice for seven years. Seven days, for seven years. God is good. October 24th is the eighth day on the calendar that the Jews are using today. It is the last day of the feast. It's the day of a solemn gathering. And, uh, you know, the Bible instructed them to have that, uh, live in those tents for seven days. On the eighth day was a big, solemn gathering. And today they call this Shemini Atzeret, the eighth day, a gathering. And it is a day of great rejoicing and celebrating. And there's a special water uh, ceremony that they do and go and take the water and pour it out and then rejoice. It is called the Feast of Nations. This Feast of Tabernacles is called the Feast of Nations. This is an example of a Florida Sukkot for 2024, an invitation by the beautiful Sewanee River in Old Town, Florida. They're having a Feast of Nations Sukkot celebration. In Revelation chapter 7 we see this, the emphasis on palm branches with the great multitude in heaven. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. So we see every nation, as this is called the Feast of Nations, we see every nation, that so many that no one could count them. And they had palm branches. And that does remind us of the eighth day when they also had the branches of palm trees. So in Revelation chapter 7, this is the same chapter where 144,000 Jews were sealed from the 12 tribes of Israel. We believe, and they, that, they were on earth. But here in verse 9, where the Jews were on earth, 144,000 of them sealed to protect them from the harm that the angels were getting ready to do to the earth. <clears throat> At that time, uh, such a large number that no one could count. From all nations, tribes, and people were standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. And in Zechariah 14, 16, <clears throat> it speaks of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. In the thousand years when Jesus returns to this earth to rule and reign on the earth, the Feast of Tabernacles is going to be an important part of God's program for everyone. The Bible says everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the King, that is Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Booths. And if any of the families of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. There's going to be blessing for those who come to Jerusalem and the Feast of Tabernacles, they're going to get the rain. And those who refuse to go to honor the King, who will be Jesus Christ, ruling from Jerusalem, they will get no rain in that thousand years. See, people are still going to be born on the earth in that thousand years, and they're going to be born in sin and need to be born again. Need to be born again. In 2023, remembering this, Shemini Yetzirah, which is coming up for 2024 on October 24th. But in 2023, it was 
October 6th in the Friday evening and October 7th it ended. And that is the day that Israel was attacked by Hamas. So the anniversary for this day is coming up in a few more days. In a few more days. In John chapter 6 verse 40, Jesus specifically spoke of the last day. He said, this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, this is John chapter 6. This phrase, the last day, is used. And then when we come to John chapter 7, the last day is, the phrase, the last day, is used again. And the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles is October 24th on the Jewish calendar today. And I know the Enoch calendar, I believe, is the October 26th. And whichever calendar the Lord wants to go by, that's up to him. I, I don't really know for sure or have a strong opinion about which calendar is right. But I would tend to say that uh, the calendar the Jews are using would impact their hearts more. So I lean toward that. But talking about the last day. Well, we already saw that in John chapter 6, the phrase the last day was used. Now, when we get to John chapter 7, again, the phrase the last day is used specifically as it refers to the Feast of Tabernacles and the Solemn Assembly Day. Now, on the last day, the great day of the feast, that's the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles or the eighth day that is tagged on to have a great gathering, a solemn gathering, and rejoicing. And they had this water celebration, uh, pouring out water and rejoicing and celebrating. And Jesus stood and cried on that last day. And he said, if anyone's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So Jesus cried out on the last day of that feast. And one chapter before that, he had specifically said that he's going to raise up those who believe on the last day, and that's going to be the rapture. Could it be that the rapture could be on the last day of the great feast? Well, I don't know for sure. Only God knows for sure. There are many days, and Jesus did say, on such a time as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So I, there's no real way to predict a day. But we're enjoying watching days, waiting, hoping, and uh, this is food for thought and hopeful speculation, uh, interesting observations. Uh, we, are, we know we're in the season right now. We're on the brink of nuclear war. The stage is being set for the uh, world government and uh, everything, the plots and schemes of the world and what's going on. We know in our hearts Jesus Christ is the king and he's coming soon. And let's just remember this as for those who are saved, by grace, been washed in the blood, those in love with Christ. Isaiah 55, 12 says, You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Now, this is a good rapture song right here. You're going to go out with joy. And that's about the Feast of Tabernacles too. It's a time of rejoicing. And you're going to go out with joy when that trumpet blows. On the last day, on the last day when Jesus raises up, those who have trusted in him, the dead in Christ arise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And that's going to be a day of great joy for those who are ready. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. As you go out with joy, you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There will be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. 
The trees of the field will clap their hands as you go out with joy. Now, the trees of the field might clap their hands, but uh, those left behind, they're not going to be uh, clapping their hands. They're going to be terrified, and they're going to face the tribulation period. They're going to face the Antichrist. They're going to face the wrath and judgment of a holy God. And everything written in the book of Revelation is going to unfold. So prepare. Prepare for that great and glorious day. And if you're saved, it's time to... Colossians chapter 3, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Mortify therefore the deeds of the flesh on this earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, covetousness, all of these things of the world, for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but is of the world. So focus on the bridegroom. As the, as the wedding day gets closer, the bride gets more and more focused on the details of the wedding. So just look to Jesus, the lover of your soul, who saves you by his grace, who shed holy blood, that all your sin would be washed away. No one can be good enough or earn it or maintain it by their works or their goodness, but Jesus Christ offers that gift of grace. Jesus told the woman at the well, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, that is uh, speaking to you, you would have asked him and he would give you living water and, and uh, praise Jesus. Huh. Receive that gift, the gift of God's grace and be prepared by grace to see the King and be transformed to be like him. Like 1 John chapter 3 says, when he appears, we'll be like him. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That day is drawing near. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited about seeing my mother at the gate. And when I see my mother at the gate, you know what? I'm going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. And I'm going to fall at his feet and thank him because he shed holy blood and cleansed my mother's sins and opened the way for her to be there. And he cleansed my sin, made me to be there. And I'm looking forward to seeing my mother again. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is the king and he's coming soon. And are you ready to go out with joy and be led forth with peace? Check this website and share this website with others, especially those who are lost, uh, scroll down the homepage all the way down. And a lot of good links on that website, but just scroll down the homepage. He died for you.com. Number four, and letter U. God bless you all. Jesus is coming soon.